Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we are going to tackle another type of hair color. Today it's time for beautiful radiant blonde hair. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vinci V style. A little while back I talked about how black hair can be very challenging. Well blonde hair is no different. Right now I'm painting up Northern Wind. Uh, this bust from Big Child Creatives. It's a really amazing bust, one of my favorites of all time. I've wanted to paint it for years, finally got my hands on it at Adepticon. But a lot of the pictures I see of people painting this miniature, including the box art itself, which is exquisite, uh, they often give her red hair, and the reason for that is obvious. That kind of bright color really sets off against, uh, uh, against sort of a Caucasian skin tone. Red draws the eye, and so it's, you know, makes it very flashy. Blonde hair is a lot more challenging, and I often see people really, really go wrong on blonde hair, making it look like it got squeezed out of a mustard bottle as opposed to being on someone's head. So today we're going to talk about the pitfalls, the challenges uh, of blonde hair, and, of course, how to paint it. We're going to do it on this incredible bust. So let's head over to the painting desk, and we'll get going. All right, let's get into some blonde hair, and we're going to start with paints, and they're going to be a bit unusual. Pastel green and pastel yellow, bringing in a green might sound strange, golden brown and cork, and then dark brown ochre. Uh, the idea here is pretty straightforward. Uh, we're not using any kind of sun or lemon yellow. This is the number one mistake I see people make. Don't do it. We need to start with sepia tones, rusty tones, ochre tones, those kinds of things. Um, we're going to start by just laying down a nice base coat of uh, the cork, which is effectively our low mid-tone. Um, this kind of tone, this sort of off-brown, is really great for it. Uh, and it's very important to establish a very solid base coat of this. You do not want the black showing through at all. If you have a zenithal highlight, that can actually help, but you still want to put on a really strong, you, you want multiple thin layers. Next up, we need to instantiate the actual shadows. And when you're placing this in, this is actually, I'm doing this more or less as a wash. You can see that it's quite thin. I'm not really wicking off too much of the excess paint. And that's because here I actually do want it to run into the recesses. One of the few times that will be desirable in this entire process. And this is only in the sort of deepest shadows. And we are going to apply it both on sort of in the front and the back and anywhere where the hair would be off of the halo. Um, we're effectively needing to pick the places where the hair is turned away from upwards. Hair has a specular highlight, meaning it will reflect light toward the eye of the viewer because it is satin. Um, so we're looking for places where the hair is vertical or tucked under. In other words, places where it's not exposed to direct light and where it would not be reflecting directly to the viewer. Now let's talk about highlights. Um, as I mentioned, for most of this, we don't want to do washes. You'll notice I'm still using a big, thick brush. Most of this has been done with like a very large brush. This is a size eight brush, effectively. And when I'm coating these areas that are going to be the base for the highlights, I'm using my upper mid-tone, which is the golden brown. And I'm covering the entire area, including the recesses. This is the next big mistake I often see people make. When they do this, they, they only hit the highest, highest parts. You want to make sure you get that all the way down in there, get into those recesses, etc. Hair moves as a sort of wave pattern. So our shadow color in the upper areas, in the highlight areas, the higher value areas, is the midtone. That's the shadow. It doesn't ever go darker than that. Whereas in the shadow areas, our highlight will be the midtone, and you'll see how we get to that later. Now is finally when I'm going to start instantiating some of the thin marks, and this is really where the process either becomes, I don't know, fun or uh, maddening, depending on your point of view. Um, but I'm taking a thinner brush, some decently flowing paint, and I'm going to start making thin lines, lots and lots and lots of thin lines. So many thin lines, no more thin lines than that, no more, still more. Um, now these first ones, I'm not being too careful. They're still a little thicker, and that's because, again, these aren't all, not all of the thickness of all of your highlights should be the same. When you're starting out with like sort of the first incremental highlight, you can have sort of thicker lines because they will be more broad. 
as we move up the spectrum into higher values, that's when we need to start thinning it. So our control of our highlights is not just about placement and not just about sort of the, the overall value change and how big those volumes are, in other words, how large or small the highlights are, but also the width of the brush stroke. So now that I'm into a brighter color, as we start to really integrate the pastel yellow and call out the big highlights, here is where we're gonna start getting thinner and thinner. Now at this point, I'm working almost completely in a layer consistency. I want this to go on. I want it to flow off the tip of the brush and just create these nice thin lines. And again, the key here is these specular sort of point highlights. Where would the light reflect? Where would the light be caught? What is upward facing? And it needs to align over the waves of the hair. What I mean by that is here on the front, you can see like I have highlights toward the end of that flowing part out. Uh, on the second sort of tier, so not the one I'm currently highlighting, but the one below this, you can see how as the hair travels, it's moving up and down. There's all sorts of different areas and flow to it, but there is a line of light. And that's the best way I can describe it. When I'm saying this halo of light, it's these concentric circles of light and shadow passing around the miniature, okay? We really wanna make sure that we're focusing in and working always in these initial layers within each space. So as I move up in value, I'm working always within the previous space that I highlighted. So each volume getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, unless I need to make a correction. Like there you saw me go a little bit outside of the previous one because I needed to push the highlight all the way up to the top of that little poking out bit. Now is where we start drawing down into the shadows because we can't just have this flat rectangular area of sort of washed shadow. Again, the highlight for the shadow area is the midtone. And so here I'm going to repeat the same process. I start with something that's relatively close to the actual color and I push it up. Now I'm working outside of the previous volumes to bring these lines from the, the mid-tone down into the shadow color and create the highlights. Still the same principle, I start a little thicker and then work into thinner, but also notice that I am working back up onto the previous layers. So I'm not just covering the shadow area, I'm stretching that new line out over where some of where it was, a little bit up into the highlights and down into the shadows. So now as we refine, our initial layers are all setting the sort of rectangular like volume lines and then we work within it. So we shrink and shrink and shrink up to the highlights and so on. The refinement phase is nothing but crossing over those lines. So it's taking the selectively brighter colors and working our way up with the line covering the colors next to it. Think of it just like how you try to blend layers, right? You've got a bright blue on one side, a dark blue on the other. You make a 50-50 mix and you try to blend out the middle in between the two. There's nothing different here in principle, except we're doing it with thin lines instead of with a swoop smooth application of the layer. Okay. All right. So, and then as I work up, I'm following effectively the same progression. I'm just going to use different mixes and slightly thinner paints. Whereas before I was working almost completely in a layer consistency, now I'm working in a very thin layer. I wanna use the transparency, the translucency of the paint to my advantage to show some of the colors underneath. Remember the keys here is we're not using a bright yellow. Stay away from these sun yellows, lemon yellows, anything like that. Now blonde hair can exist in a wide variety of colors, of course, as I've mentioned, but in general, the tones we wanna to use are more subtle. They're in the sepias, the rusts, uh, and of course up into ochres. And then from there, we transition directly from the ochre into more of an ivory or a brighter tone, whatever we happen to be using. That's gonna give us a more realistic effect. The more platinum blonde you want to go, the more you push it into that higher value spectrum. So the more you start including those ivories or other sort of bright pastel colors and increase the tint accordingly. All right, so now we continue on with the journey 
of bringing these down. Now I'm up into the you know very bright highlights, still working thin. And I want to sort of reinforce a point. Even though the general highlight and the general light lines and volumes are moving in these like, as I said, this halo pattern, this sort of flat area, there is a line that is the brightest highlight. There is a line that is the midtone. There is a line that is the deepest shadow. One of the keys with hair is it can't actually be a solid thin line. Um, that will look fake in almost immediately. You have to have individual strands go farther, so it needs to be varied. Think of it like an EKG or something. It's like, you know, going up and down. You have lots of different variances on exactly how big the total volume is, and you're doing that through instantiating these slightly different lengths of each individual line. When it comes to sort of smaller volumes like this, something you'll very often encounter, it's still the same techniques. I'm just doing it with a much sharper brush and in a much smaller space. But each braid is getting the same treatment, where I'm pushing the high highlights toward the top, going into mid-tones at the bottom, hiding the deep shadows uh, underneath, and, uh, and then working down those thin lines. And you can see here how that halo line, there is a solid area where it's completely sort of one line, and the deepest shadow in that area is the mid-tone, same at the other points. But uh, that line is not just one solid rectangle of light. There's different lengths of these individual lights. They move, they spread. And that's because we want it to have that natural wave feeling to it. Our last step is to just make sure there's no too sudden transitions. That's really what you do at the end. As you're making all these lines, you will as you make your way around the figure, especially a bust of this size, but it can happen all the same on 32 millimeter miniatures. Uh, you will notice that there are areas where basically your transitions are just happening too quickly. So you need to just go in and make sure that all of those are smoothed out by running again more thin layer lines over the top. Here is where we bring in that little bit of pastel green, which will turn into a nice bright white color, give us a bit of an environmental light. And there I'm just touching those in the very centers of all of these things, working in these thin layers, making sure that at the highest central point we have the actual specular highlight the tiniest little area where light will reflect the most strongly into the eye of the viewer, showing that true satin quality of the hair. Lastly, then we're working in a glaze to just sort of of our mid-tone to re-instantiate our saturation. Saturation is really important when you're working, especially in something that has a lot of different tint in it, like this, where I've used a lot of these brighter colors. And so I'm just going over, this will both help smooth some of the sins and transition lines, but also bring back that rich tone of saturation. You can see how intense, how wonderful that is when we get that color in there. So this is two thin applications of the glaze all over the transitions in between the mid-tone and the shadows. We don't ever touch the highlights. There you go, her hair is all done. Uh, as you can see, there's still a little bit of cleanup on this model to be done. We might do a few more things with her, uh, but her hair is looking radiant and shiny exactly how we want. I hope this video helped you with your own uh, blonde hair painting, whatever miniature you happen to be working on. If it did, or if you liked this, hey, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. Don't forget, we have new videos here every Saturday. If you want to support the channel, then hitting those buttons and doing those things is a great way to do it. It's free. But if you want to go farther, there's a Patreon down below that helps us keep the lights on around here. And that Patreon is focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. We'd love to have you as part of the community. As always, I thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.